So look at the area and it says I'm down here on this corner and you've got all that area to walk which I am not going to walk but I ought to. One thing I really like, I do definitely enjoy when I go on these walks, I enjoy the fact that I'm not organised and I don't plan and I don't know where I'm going because now I've come across Bishop's Park and Fulham Palace. Probably this was some of the area I said I wasn't going to walk. But you do end up walking it and I can hear Fulham's football ground in the background. And that's a great sound to hear football fans. Lovely old gates there before that house. Look. So look, it said I was there before, didn't it? It doesn't say oh, I'm here now. Halfway, halfway through, yeah. I think, here's the bridge. There's halfway through and there's Fulham Football Ground at the top. Number 18, brilliant. Look at this place over here. Fulham Palace. Looks nice. I think you can just wander around it all and obviously you can make donations. I think some people, it's only just kicked off, some people I've seen walking to the football, taking a quick walk to the football. Gothic Lodge, private. If someone lives in there. Someone said, do you want to live in this little lodge? Rent free, but you just got to watch Be Them, Be The Security Man or Coachman's Lodge, look that one is. Or just uh, maybe do a bit of gardening, I don't know. You'd have to consider that, wouldn't you? Fabulous. I like all that. I'm going to get a bit closer to the football ground if I can. This is nice. See, now here, 1,500 little flat round here. Ah, someone scored. Sounds like Fulham. I don't think the away fans would make that much noise. There's a skateboard park over there. All swings and sides. You see, yeah, if you live quite walkable to here, you bring my grandson here. Let's have a little play. Pretty idyllic. Nice little cafe there. Might have to go in there and have a little break, have a cup of tea perhaps. Once I walk a bit closer to the football ground, I dare say that opportunity will be gone. We've got little tennis courts and bowling greens here. Aunt Yield and Uncle Vernon did a bit of outdoor bowling. My mum and dad did indoor short mat bowling, but it's a little flat there. Might be all right, mightn't it? Well, there's a little outside play area. You come out this side here, Bishop's Park Road, SW6. Look at those lovely properties, flats. Stevenage Road, SW. Beautiful. That'd be a nice place to live. Bishop's Park Road, SW6. So yeah, I didn't really want to sit in that cafe. I thought I'd get a little takeaway, a cup of tea and keep walking. I had a chat with them people there. They don't mind uh, cashless because they said they always worry about having a lot of cash and getting it home. And then sometimes with cash, they only rent that cat that unit. And uh, the boss man who owns the freeholds of the businesses or whatever, always for a lot of people, they have problems with them taking cash. So they're quite happy cashless because it's all documented. So this is right by Fulham's football ground. It's lovely. Obviously it's right by the river because one of their stands backs onto the river. I'll tell you a nice little story, one of my nice little stories. I think it was, I'm guessing it was late 70s. It, I don't think it was early 80s, but again, when I Google and look, I'll find out because Swindon, my football team, come to play at Fulham. We stood on the open terraces. So we were away at Fulham and Fulham had in their team 
Rodney Marsh and George Best. Can't remember what the result was, but I definitely saw Rodney Marsh and George Best play in the Fulham kit against Swindon. I think Fulham were one up because there was a big roar and I haven't heard one since. But you can see the stadium in the background there. There's a lovely, it's called Craven Cottage and there's a lovely little cottage on the corner end somewhere. Uh, famous for Jimmy Hill, didn't he own it all? He's certainly a director at Fulham. And he was one of the first to talk about or bring in all seat stadiums, I believe, or talk about them. I think that was before there was any problems. Well, these flats here, next houses, I'm sure they're all flats now, or most of them. Look at that lovely front door. Beautiful. Uh, it'll be all right here. I could have walked around the back of the stadium, which is directly on the river, but I came around the front of the stadium because I believe this is where the little Craven Cottage, it's like a little black and white house, is just on this corner, maybe just out of view now. So we'll have a look. So yeah, that is, I think that little building there is actually called Craven Cottage. It's a cottage. And it's in part of the stadium, so there's part of the old stand there. Got a nice old stand. That bit there is a new stand that goes L-shaped round the back of the river. Let's see, we really saw it. Let's look at that, shall we? Early 2024. That'd be somewhere to live, wouldn't it? Imagine. Flats and I saw Only of use for a few months of the year though. New mixed use for the stand. Interesting. That's the little cottage there, isn't it? But these old wooden doors, these are the old stands like at Swindon. We used to we used to have all this. Not not actually as nice as this, but really uh, home and away. Lovely, lovely buildings. A lot more efficient floodlights than Swindon. Knott's Forest. Forest in town. So that, I can see the name anyway, but that's Johnny Haynes, Fulham footballer, very famous Fulham footballer. 1934. I dare say my dad would have seen him play football. Don't know when he finished playing. He died 2005. So he lived a good age. He certainly didn't play football for that length of time. But he did live a good age. Thirty-four born, so he was probably playing in the early fifties, which was exactly when my dad was playing football. Johnny Ain Stan they call that one. Look. I'd have got here a bit earlier, I could have brought a ticket and uh, got in the game. In 1880 that was built, well, that's interesting. Was it always a football stadium? Well, I guess so. It's nice. Could have brought a ticket but it's half time nearly now so... If I'd have got here a bit earlier, I would have bought a ticket and just gone and sat in and watched it by chance. You can buy tickets on the match day, so maybe it's something I'll do another day. SW6. Nice, see, that's all right. Flats, no doubt. There you got the old there, and you got the new. I'm sure when Swindon come much later than the Georgie Best time, we come in a cup game sometime in the late 90s maybe we had that end that was the away end but it says it's the home end now uh, it was a big covered end we had we had half of it 
It's the plains. You also get the plains here, very much like Richmond. They are quite low down. So I think that's the end of Fulham Football Club and SW6. I believe they're one up against Nottingham Forest. Still people going in. I suppose they've got tickets and if they're late getting here, they're going to get 45 minutes, aren't they? Oh, that was good. Look, I got a nice roar. <laughs> Nothing better than the sound of a football match, I think. Interesting thing, I've seen a couple of streets full of these. Have people used them um, to go to the football park to open and they'll get them again afterwards? Or is this just where they're based for people just to use them? And of course, what we've got here, we've got Sky Sports. Sky, or if it's not Sky, I mean, companies broadcast it, give it to Sky because every Premier League game is broadcast. Interesting facts, huh? Maybe, maybe not. Electric charging points, got a few of them here. It's pretty good. Somewhere from an empty cup of tea. Good job for the day. Just, uh, right, where are they? They're in the background there, them coppers at the little uh, tea burger stand. I said to the guy, oh, you're not, you're not meant to drink on duty, are you? We had a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chat. I said, slip a bit of whiskey in there. He said, have you got any then? And uh, then we got onto shots and they both like tequila. I don't know anybody can like the taste of tequila. It's just such a horrible taste. Anyway, getting back to properties, look at these. These are quite nice. It's lovely here. You've got the noise of the football on football day. I'll turn the camera around. This is nice. I should imagine their housing association, a little bit run down. But a little flat in those type of places would be nice. I'm going towards Fulham Broadway, which is exactly really where I want to be. I did see a flat. Look at that. Fabulous. <laughs> Always get sidetracked. I saw a flat at the back of Chelsea's ground. I think it was, might have even been, it was definitely, it could have been a two bed, or if not a one bed, but it was in a gated community and it had access to a swimming pool in the complex. It was about 1,700 quid. And it went within days, not that I was, wasn't really in a position to go and look, but I did mark it and save it and it was a lovely, quite a modernish block. Really nice flat. So, Fulham Broadway, underground tube is less than five minutes walk to Chelsea's football ground and the bus goes this way to Fulham Broadway although there's no buses around because of the football they're all on diversion I expect football day but normally you'd be able to get a bus if you lived around here it's nice I like those old terrace properties Victorian terraced we're still in Stevenage Road, SW6. Very nice. So I'm gonna Google that and put a link in the thing. Marsh Parsons for sale. That's a terraced house, possibly a two bed terraced house. I'll put a link in the description. Let's see how much it is for sale. I'm gonna guess now, seven, 800,000. It's a pretty big guess, isn't it? It seems a ridiculous amount of money also, but I bet it is. Be surprised if it's, I suppose X Housing Association, probably. Maybe it's half a mil. So I've really copped out of making a bid, haven't I? Because I've gone up and down and all over the place. These places here will be, yeah, so let's rephrase it. Let's put it in at 600,000 and we'll see. Link in description at the start of, February 2023 as to how much that is. These little places here have all got lovely tiled inner porch areas. Nice tiling. 
Ah, uh, the decision about here is, although it is nice, you, you are too far away from your local, local facilities, supermarkets, things like that. That's why I like to live in a city. This is, I, you know, if there's a high street, Fulham, I'd rather live in a flat almost above a shop or in that area rather than being out here, which is, so yes, it's quieter and all that, but I need to be able to walk to everything because I won't have a car and I don't, uh, I don't want half a mile walk to either the underground or a bus or facilities. So that's just me. Other people would come here and have a car, but my goodness, what would a car cost you a year? Especially one like that. I've had all them. I've had lovely cars. Just haven't had a car for five years and I don't desire to go back to driving, really. Quite happy not to drive again. It's about living somewhere where everything like that is on your doorstep. There's a bit of hustle bustle. There's a bit of noise. There's a bit too many people, but that's all right. That's, that suits me better. I always wonder, sometimes people wonder why you're taking a video, but look at that beautiful door. That's a business I had for 30 odd years, windows and doors, look at that window. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm at Fulham Cemetery, oh, South Kensington, that bus. <laughs> I do love central London. I reckon I'll end up paying more than my budget to live more central again. But anyway, uh, I've got to go up here to get to Fulham Broadway and instantly I'll be like oh yeah I could live here Fulham Broadway is nice I've been there many times I remember being in walking down Harley Street and I did a video of doors they're in my London Covid walks um, but look at that door absolutely fabulous now another interesting little fact about me uh, last week I stayed at my daughter's in Didcot, helped her with a grandson and just a dos on the sofa there. And my average steps for a week, he got flashed then that car. Saw the flash go off speed camera. Yeah, there it is. My uh, average steps per week. Look at that. Beautiful. Edelweiss. Average steps per week were 3,300. Today, I'm on 7,000 already. And that's what, that's what London does to you anyway. Even if you're central and you know where you are, you walk somewhere, you think, oh, just walk, it'd be only be five minutes. Every five minute walk in London turns into 15 minutes. So in no time at all, my average steps when I was living in London was something like 8,000 I think a year so every day and I used to didn't really go that far I always used to say I don't go far don't walk far out of Soho which I don't but 8,000 average in a year a week in Digcot 3,300 and today here I'm up to 7,000 so here I am look and if you said, well, where would you like to live? It's the same way as I'm going to walk. I'm going to turn right back on the other side of that part. I'm not going to Hammersmith Way. I'm going to Hills Court, Kensington, Fulham Broadway. Fulham Broadway's definitely a possibility, apart from the price. On the corner of that road, look, there's a lovely old building. It's a osteotherapy, counsellors, acupuncture, pilates, chiropractic little business going on in there now that would have been the gatehouse i suppose to the park we're now in lily road at lily road and we're going to fulham broadway i might get that bus stop up there on the left jump on a bus for one pound fifty i'll just see how far it is definitely airplanes there's one there airplanes are everywhere here because again, you're close to the Heathrow running. I saw one I missed, I wanted to video it. All underneath through the clouds, you could see Emirates. Clouds are very heavy, quite low clouds up there. So it was quite low down, but 
plane was almost obscured, apart from the Emirates name at the bottom. All right, let's cross, cross over if I can. Yep, without getting run over. Let's see how far Full and Broadway is from here. <laughs> yeah, I jumped on a bus. I don't think it's far, but it's only 150 for any length of journey, so knees beginning to play up. Let's see how long it takes. So I went on to West Brompton, past Fulham Broadway, just because it's a bit central for getting back into Soho. I'm meeting a mate in a couple of hours. And that says on that bus stop, it says Empress State Building. See that big building there? That's the Empress State Building. Link in description. I don't know what it is, but I will endeavour to find out. Let's see. Here's a good one for you. They call them ghost signs. Safety matches. The old signs on old buildings. There's the Empress State building, whatever it is. But it looks like office block rather than residential. But yeah, I love the old ghost signs on buildings. A lot more attractive than that, those little shapes on that bit there, isn't it? So there's a ghost sign. You can Google, there's loads of sites, loads of people that specialise in ghost signs of London. Well, I'm West Brompton now. Doesn't tell me much, but it's an area I, I like, but probably can't afford. Nice pub there called the Lily Langtree. Oh, Lily Langtree. And this is still SW6. Still in SW6, looks beautiful upstairs. Let's get in the Lily Lang tree, eh? There's a nice building there, the Prince. SW6, West Brompton. Little event going on in there, or perhaps they're going in to see the football. Look at the terraced houses on the end of it. Fabulous. Could be anywhere in central London with them, couldn't they? Really nice. Obviously got an event going on here or something. One street, three bars, four restaurants. Big old place. Empress Place. SW6. It's got a vibe to it, a buzz to it, definitely. This would suit me a lot better already. And right next to that big pub, You've got all that empty land there, look. You don't often see empty land in central London. And I bet you someone's planned for it. There's the underground right next to it. And we're going over the bridge. And this is underground and overground. West Brompton Station. Lovely old fashioned station. West Brompton Station. I might have to go into there and head into uh, interesting pictures there that head into town. Time's getting on. Hendrix there for my friend Susie. Baker Street Station. Oh, should we do the underground? Or should we just get on another bus? I quite like the buses. 150, it take longer. I've got plenty of time, otherwise the underground you've got all your stairs and that, haven't you, again? Uh, always caught development centre, yeah. There's a lot of empty land there, that side. Wow, look at all that. Tons of empty land. don't think that's the back of the old Hall's Court concert hall because you come out of Hall's Court station and the old concert hall is right there normally. Living art, there we go. Got grass growing out of it. Oh, he's got a moustache. There we are, look. My mate grew one of these twirly moustaches, look. Maybe I could grow one one day, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, there we are. Look. <laughs> Good stuff. 
uh, I said it probably wasn't the Earl's Court concert hall and that the big arena that they pulled down, but it could be the back of it because it's huge. It was caught the old Earl's Court itself, very, very big. So it could be the back area of it all. Old Brompton Road, old Brompton ceremony. Oh, walked past the bus stop. Got carried away with these images, didn't I? It's all grass going out of it, look real. I'm gonna wait for a bus because I can get a bus. I don't know really where, but I can get a bus into town, definitely. I saw one for, uh, where did I just see one for? Maybe Marlebone even. So I got off at the bus at South Kensington. Because uh, that was where it finished, I'm at South Kensington Tube. I bet I hadn't video much around here because I want to keep it down to about 20 minutes. I'd have to come back here another day and do a complete video tour because it's obviously very beautiful here. You've got the V&A just at the end of this street up here, somewhere on the main road. Kind of know. I'll walk up that way a little bit. Population and everything, but this is this is a massive uh, sort of tourist area, really. So there, you can see that it's part of. What is that? That might be the British Museum, that part, I think. Gonna get it all wrong, aren't I? I've been in that pub. I think we had a, a Bowie Net meetup in that pub when we went to see Bowie's stuff at... <laughs> Where did we have his clothing? Was it the V&A? I've already forgot that. Terrible, isn't it? Another bit of a ghost sign over there, look. Not a full on ghost sign because it's not painted in the wall and disappearing. Uh, yeah. The hairdresser's shop. Fabulous. Good little boy getting his hair cut. Talking about how the, the dad's talking about getting the part in dead on. Dad ain't got any hair like me. I'd have take my grandson in there one day and have a haircut. Fabulous. Uh, I have to admit to googling because I know if you go up here and turn left, the V&A is right there. So that was a pub where we had the meet up, definitely. And yeah, his exhibition, of course, it was at the V&A. Why did I have to Google that? Considering I'm a bloody obsessive Bowie fan. Toured that V&A exhibition everywhere. We even went to Japan to see it, all over Europe. There was part of it over there, and it. And it's a British Museum on the left of what I did get right. The v and is a bit further down there. But look, if <laughs> it's, got, it's way out of my budget. But yeah, maybe a bit too busy here, but it's really nice. Really like it. Thanks for watching. That's the end of Putney. Putney's well finished, isn't it? I didn't really fancy much of Putney, but I know I didn't see the best of it or didn't see it all. But maybe it's just a bit too far out anyway. Exhibition Road SW7. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. My subscribers are going up, so let's get going with it. I'm going back abroad soon. Don't know where yet, still though.